Hi guys, Macman here. So this is going to be the third video in my 338 Pro load development. So as you've seen in the previous video where we put these through and neck cut them. So that's normally the first stage I'll do with brand new brass. So this is Lupo brass. It's good quality brass anyway, but you can improve it a little bit. So the next stage I'm going to do, I'm going to go through, I'm going to actually just check the primer pockets. They're normally pretty good. Let's see, you can see that they're all clean new. But then if I run this Sinclair uniform tool through it, just a couple of turns. Just taking it off a little bit. You can just see this shined it up and it's totally uniform that ready for the primers So I'm gonna go through and do that with all of them and the other thing I do I'm just gonna chamfer the inside of the of the neck They look pretty good, but I've got this uh, I've got the Ellie Wilson Burr it, burr in the chamfering tool. So I just go in really gently, keeping it square. Just a little turn. And you can just see there, if you can see it, it's just taken just the edge off just a little bit. I'm getting it hard to focus it here. Just got my phone here now with a light on it. I don't know if you can see. If I can get it just right. You can just see it's taken just a little bit off. You can see a little bit of brass filings in there. So it's just chamfered it just a little bit. So that will that piece will be done. Obviously, we're gonna go through these. just taking a touch off them and then on the other one just the smallest of turns just to clean them up so I'm gonna go through all this brass this is, uh, 49 rounds here So this is going to be like the, the next step on my development and just go through them. They don't need a lot, like I said, this, this Lupo brass is pretty good, but it's just getting those little, little bit of roughness off it. going through them all and trying to get your round to be as most consistent as you can get so I'm just going to go through these and finish doing this and then the next step I'm going to show you is I'm going to neck size these back because obviously we've I opened them up a little bit when I um, cut the necks with the 21st century neck expander arbor so all these have been opened up when I neck cutted them. So I'm just going to go through, show you how I set up and just uh, size the necks. And we'll do that once I finished um, preparing this. So I've got the last, last three to do. So like I said, just a slight turn in the primer. Just nice and gently and square on the neck. Get some done. So that 
rest of them all done. Now you can see there's just a little bit of a little bit of brass there from uh, 48 cases. So it's just a little bit there. You haven't taken a lot off, so all you've done is you just chamfered the inside. It's just gonna help when you're setting the bullet. And obviously when you're setting the primers, now they're all they're all done, all uniformed. So the next stage I'm gonna go through is uh, we're just gonna neck size these to get these ready. So the dies that I'm gonna be using for the whole setup, I've got the, the red in, three through eight Lepore Magnum, competition die set. They've got the micrometers on them. This is a seating die. I'm using the middle one for bumping the shoulder back once I've fired them. And we've got the sizing, neck sizing die in here. The decap is still in there. So this was a brand new set. I stripped this down before doing the video. I've gone through, I've cleaned it all, and I put the actual bushing die in there. And this is all set up, ready to go. The bushing die I'm going to be using is the Redding Titanium Nitrate Bushing Die, size 3.364. And how I got to that size was, so with the bullets I'm using, they're 0.388. I've neck cut them. So the thickness of the brass now is 14 thou. So you can go in and you put this in twice because you're going to be measuring from here, the bullet and this side. So you put in the 14 thou twice, which gives you 0. 366 diameter here. So with my bolt actions, I run uh, a 2,000 um, tension on them. So obviously to get the 2,000 tension, you need to take away the 2,000, which will bring it down to 364. So that's how I work out my my neck tension on um, on this brass again i watched quite a few videos um, and read some information about it and this seems to work for me as a two <coughs> excuse me as a two thou tension with bolt action if i'm shooting my ars i'm running a four thou tension and the same with my m1a springfield i'm running a four thou tension and what you can do is you can load up a whole magazine, measure the last one in your ARs, shoot them, keep the last, measure it. If it's still measuring at the length you um, sized it to, you're good to go. If you're finding that they are moving a little bit, you can always increase the tension by, by going down sizes in the dies, uh, in the bushes. But I found 2,000 on my bolt action, 4,000 on my semi-automatics. Um, it works great and the other thing that I tend to do I will get I will get one of the shells and I coat it with this marker on one side because I like to go down about three quarters of the way down to neck tension. I don't ne I don't size this all the way to the shoulder. I go down about two about three quarters of the way down. If you can see that little mark there. And how I'll do that is now that I've marked this, as I put it into the die and size it, you will see the marks working its way down the black. And once you get to a point where you're happy then you know you don't have to adjust this die anymore. It's all set up. So let's move over onto the, the press and we'll get that done. Okay, so I've got the die set up in the press. You can see here, it's got this floating cylinder which cups totally around the brass. So it feeds in there and it 
it keeps the whole thing square. So these, these competition dies are very, very good. So I got this set up and all I'll do then is I'm gonna just gonna drop the the shell, bring it up slowly into the die. You'll start to feel a contact in. I bring this one out. So if you see there, you can see the difference in colour at the top section, how far it's going down. So I didn't take this one all the way up, I just wanted to show you. So if that's where it was going now. You can adjust the micrometer down, just keep adjusting it down until the bottom. And you can see there. I don't know if you can see, I've come down. You can see the last mark. It's right on that line where I marked. You just see the discoloring and I've come down perfectly to where I've marked the last line is right there Sorry, it's not focusing very well so I've, I've actually sized that that neck down as far as three quarters of the way down where I want to be see there there's the line all the way around and you can you can see it on the back of the case as well there's a little mark going around so you can see I'm down about three quarters of the way down on there so all I'd go through now it is the titanium one you don't really need to lube but I tend to just a little bit of dry lube, shake it off just to help everything runs nice and smooth. So this is just straightforward, nice and easy with them. see there with a the dry lube on it you can see the the mark where I'm coming down to you can just see it around the rim there about three quarters or just over three quarters of the way down and when you're doing this you're trying to do the same same sort of tension on your press to repeat it every time you don't want to go fast on one slow on the next all you're trying to do is keep everything nice smooth consistent so same sort of tension let it come to the stop bring it back out nice and easy and again it's just keep in Trying to get everything as consistent as possible. So I'll just run through with these and get these done and we'll be back. Okay, so we're coming to the end of this batch. So they've all gone through really nice. They've all felt pretty much the same, same tension going through on all of them. And last one. Okay. So there's the batch. So we've neck cut them. We've chamfered them, we've uniformed the primer pockets, all the way through I've always kept them in this tray so they're not getting banged about against each other, they're all, they're all being 
kept nice and easy so they don't get dinged up. You can see just inside some of these necks now that there's a little bit of brass filings on some of them, which I'm not going to run these through a tumbler um, or any sort of cleaner now once I finish this process. I'm just going to go through, I'll put some swabs down there to clean out anything and then just wipe them down with a workshop towel on the outside and um, they'll be good to go. I just don't want to risk putting them into a tumbler or anything where it might ding the necks again because um, these are now ready to load. So that's about it for this video guys. Hopefully it was a interesting one for you. So the next one I'll do is going to be priming them. So we'll go through and use the, what have I got over there? I've got the RCB, the RCBS bench primer. So we'll go through and get all these primed up. Um, and then I'll show you how I um, do the powder, how I fill the powder, how I take it up and just trickle in the last little bit. So we'll do that and probably we'll do the, the, the seating of the bullets as well. So that will probably be the last, the last one in the range. And that will almost be a, a completed round ready to go and shoot. Hope you enjoyed the video guys and we'll see you next time.